In this video, I'm going to have a look at the HESC support ticket system and give you my first impressions. Okay, so let's have a look around. So obviously we've got no tickets in here at the moment. We could create a ticket up here. So we'll get a new ticket form. Um, customer's name, customer's email, subjects, the description of the ticket, which is basically the same as an email, isn't it? Who's this signed to? So you could leave it unassigned for now. Um, are we going to send an email notification to the customer? So that's pretty standard stuff really. Um, let's go back. So this would be the ticket list. Um, obviously there's no tickets in here at the moment. There's a tick box here at the top to auto reload the page. So when we tick that, it will every few seconds it will refresh this page. So if there's any new tickets or new updates come in, then we'll see it without clicking the refresh button. Uh, you can see there's a countdown timer there. Um, what else have we got? Um, so you can customize some of the um, aspects of this. So you can have canned responses. Um, you should give it a title and what your canned response is going to be. It just makes it easy for technicians to just reply with a standard bit of text, you know, have you tried restarting your computer kind of thing. Um, so, yep, yeah, so there's canned responses in there. Um, tickets, no ticket templates. Um, not quite sure what that's about. We'll have to come back to that later. Um, there's a knowledge base here. Um, whether you'd use that or whether you'd use something else. I'm not sure we'd use that in our system, but um, you might decide that you want to use it in yours. Um, I suppose it'd be useful for creating like KB articles like Microsoft do it. Um, it's there, isn't it? Um, categories. Um, so you can assign category priorities and how many days you're going to be, I suppose that's a response target. Um, you should give it a name. Um, or to assign tickets in this category to specific users, that might be useful. Um, okay, what else have we got? So this, what, this is our list of technicians. Obviously at the moment we've just got the one technician in there. Um, reports, there's standard reports in here, um, so it's basically what tickets have happened in a particular date range, uh, pretty standard stuff really, um, tickets per day, tickets per month, tickets per user, tickets per category. Um, modules, this is, I imagine, is a a teaser hoping to get you to upgrade and use the HESC cloud version instead of the on-prem version. Um, yeah, if you've decided to make the decision to go on-prem then I'm not quite sure why you would want to be going to, on, to the cloud system but you might decide to do that, that's um, entirely up to you. Uh, suspect the the cloud version is probably going to be less flexible, uh, but I don't know that for certain. Uh, your mileage may vary. What else have we got here? Tools, and emails. Okay, could be useful. So if you're getting plagued by a particular email address, you could ban them. Ban IPs, service messages, new service message. Um, 
Okay, so it's like an announcement, a global announcement to your users. Okay, um, email templates. Okay, so this is one thing that you, I have looked at this already, um, you can alter the, so you've got email, uh, email formats that are going out to customers and you've got emails that are going out to staff, so these are your technicians. So obviously, if you've had a reply, if, so if there's a reply on a ticket from a technician and it's going out to a customer, then this is the template it's going to use. So if we edit that, you'll see in here that it basically just says we've replied to the ticket and to read it, you're gonna to have to go and log in to this console I'm not sure how many users or how many companies would be in, impressed by that. Um, users don't necessarily like having to go and log in somewhere else. Um, it might work for you. Um, in one way, it will uh, alert you to the fact that they have or haven't read your message. Whereas if you, in a traditional system like Spiceworks, uh, if you reply to something in there, it's going to go out to the user and you don't know really whether they've read that message. I suppose if you do it this way, there will be a mechanism where you can see whether they've read it or not. So that could be useful, but um, I think this might be a mild annoyance uh, for the end users, but up to you, I suppose. Um, I know that you can alter this so that it actually does put the actual message in the email that it goes out as. So it's not the end of the world, you can change it. Um, so there's various different uh, formats of emails that you can go in and change the format of. Um, or obviously there's a plain text version and a rich text version. Um, so there's going to be some formatting differences, fonts and things in the rich, tech ver rich text version. Um, Okay, we'll come back out of there. What else have we got? Custom fields. So you can add custom fields to the tickets. Um, you might have a particular thing that you need to monitor when you're tracking your tickets. Um, and treat it as you wish. Oh, I think you can have um, something like 20 or 50 different fields. There are quite a lot of new uh, custom fields. Statuses. So this is the built-in statuses. You can create an extra status if these don't really fit your categories. Um, so that could be useful. Uh, OAuth providers. So this is a login authentication method, isn't it? You might find that useful. Settings, so we've already seen the general settings page and you can change the theme, but there's there's not a great deal of choice on the themes. Um, there are various different colors of the same format, um, although there's kind of a, an implied promise of some new themes to come, um, but for now, it's pretty much this, but with different colors. So in the help desk settings, uh, font sizes maybe, auto close the tickets, that's useful. Um, coming from Spiceworks, that's not really a thing in Spiceworks, but it, it is a thing in other ticket systems. I think I'm right in saying Zendesk maybe. Um, but yeah, that could be useful. Maximum number of open tickets. I think this is um, the maximum number that a customer can have um, so that they don't uh, plague you with new ones before they've sold, sorted their old ones. Um, number of days before being due. Uh, reply order. So on the actual ticket itself, when you view the ticket, you can have the newest reply at the top of the ticket or the newest reply at the bottom of the ticket and again with the reply form you can 
make it so that you have to scroll all the way down to the bottom of all the replies to see the reply form or you can put the reply form at the top. That's an interesting section to play with. Bit ticket width. I imagine this may be useful if a customer sends in a massive image. I um, don't know, I'll have to have a play with that. Lots of miscellaneous items down here. Um, one in particular is this time worked function. Um, I'll show you that later in um, a new actual ticket. You may wish to turn that off. It's basically where the ticket starts clocking time while the ticket's open. And then when you click submit, it adds that time to a total, uh, which may or may not be useful depending on how you work. Attachment sizes, you may wish to vary this, but obviously the bigger you allow it to receive, and the more you're going to have to store on your server. So you may have disk space issues if you let this go on too long or you have this set too high. You can enable or disable the knowledge base. By default it's enabled, but you could just disable it if this, if this isn't something that you're looking at using. Email settings, so by default there's no email integration with HESC, you have to actually enable it. Um, so most of the time I would think most people are going to be using either IMAP fetching or POP3 fetching. So you turn that on and get your mail server and your ports that you're going to connect with, whether you're using TLS etc. And then a username and a password and it's going to go and fetch the emails that arrive in a particular mailbox whatever it fetches it's going to create a ticket for it for it if it doesn't already know of that um, subject line if it knows the subject line that it's seeing then it'll add it as a reply to it to the outstanding ticket this is useful sometimes you get auto responses on customer mailboxes and it can create a loop where you're system replies to their auto reply and then their auto reply replies back with another auto reply so that can be useful to stop that happening detect emo typos so yeah this is useful isn't it if you mistype something that's fairly common like hotmail it'll alert you to the fact that you might have mistyped it so I suppose you could add to your dictionary in here maybe somehow. Yeah, you can add extra lines in there. Ticket list. Fields in the ticket list. So when we're viewing the tickets on the main screen, we can see these fields. So we can tick these on and off depending on what our preferences are. What date format are we going to use? Depending on which region you're in, you may want to adapt that. We've got in here miscellaneous time zone, time format. You could change that and see, show you showing PM instead of 17, 24 hour clock, and 12 hour clock. Date format. Again, you can spin your dates around to different formats. And your time. You can even have it with the words or a custom option. I believe if you put it on custom, you probably have to play with these. Maintenance mode. Uh, I imagine if you tick that, so staff can be able to log in, but customers can't use it. Useful, could be useful. I've seen that before on other systems. 
WordPress uses something like that, doesn't it? Okay, so that's generally the settings available. Let's create a ticket. So we click submit and obviously at the moment we've not set any email settings so we get this message saying that we could not send email notifications which is fine we're, we're aware of that aren't we so what have we got here we've got a new ticket uh, here's the time that's clocking as we said before um, so this would be our reply to the customer Uh, there's a tick box by default here saying assign the ticket to myself so I'm, I'm putting the reply on here so by default I'm grabbing this ticket so this will be mine obviously again we're getting that warning but we know that so we can now see that this was effectively Fred's comment um, so we created the ticket on Fred's behalf and then Joe's replied asking if it's been restarted we've got a ticket tracking ID here and the ticket number itself is there so there's two separate things there there's tracking ID and there's a ticket number we can see it's had one reply and we can see at the moment it's had 50 seconds worked on it if Fred has other tickets then you'll see the other tickets in this section here Going into here, you can see that the timer's started again. It didn't record anything last time, if you noticed. We mentioned that it said 50 seconds before, and this was still clicking. Um, so because we were sat reading it, it didn't clock any time for us. It would have only recorded that time had we actually made a message and replied to the customer. So now we've got some extra time here. We can edit that time by clicking on the time. We can edit it. Uh, but that's pretty much as far as it goes, I think. Let's go back to the tickets list. So you can see now we've got a ticket. So this will be our list of tickets as and when more come in. Uh, we can see there's one assigned to me and there's none assigned to anybody else. We can search in here for the ticket numbers uh, or the tracking IDs or ticket numbers or name or email or subjects or message. There's lots of things to search on there, isn't there? Uh, it's quite a fast search as well. Anybody coming from um, Spiceworks will be quite happy with the search speed of that. So that's generally the, that's generally the look and feel of the HESC help desk ticket system. If you've not already subscribed, now might be a good time because obviously this is part of a series and it will just mean that you can get notified and be able to see the other episodes as and when they come out. Okay, thanks guys and catch you on the next one.